Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I want to share with you how to make your construction details go from flat to fab using just SketchUp's native tools. So we've, most of us in the environmental design industry, whether you're in landscape or in our, um, architecture or even interior design, you're probably going to come across construction details one way or another, whether you're working with them in SketchUp to build something in 3D or going the opposite. So taking something from 3D and going to construction documents, I want to kind of look at the difference now between going again, the traditional method, which is just kind of cutting a section slice or looking at something in plan view and drafting it in two dimensions, like something you'd see in AutoCAD, and then instead going a little bit further, which is adding some depth, adding some shadow and some texture and some realism. And then of course, you know, looking at it from different angles so that we're getting uh, one detail in a way can actually become multiple details. So let's just go ahead and get to it. So this is here what uh, I've got. It's a finished detail, but I want to kind of start here. Like, for example, this is a landscape planter wall and stair. And again, this process doesn't have to be for landscape. It can be for architecture or interiors as well. It just happens to be a model that I had uh, details that I had access to. And um, you can see that now, you know, this tells us pretty much everything we need to know, but it's looking at one slice. So if you were to draft this in CAD, you would have to do this slice for this one, and then you'd have to slice it again through the wall. You'd have to do a separate one for plan view. And I'm just wanting to do sort of one that then I can get multiple um, pieces of content out of. So I'm going to pop over here to my AXO. So you can see the difference here between the sort of 2D and the 3D. So all the same information. Obviously, there's some text callouts that I wouldn't do in SketchUp. I would do those in layout. And I'll do another video on that uh, soon. But you can see you've got all the information about what's happening with the footings. I think I have something here that I had hidden. So I'll just make sure that everything is, of course, showing. And that's a, how easy it is. Just pop into that group. And there it is. So now this is an example of one where I had the detail and I actually modeled from the detail. But let's look at it. Let's look at sort of if we were starting from scratch. So I want to take this away and I want to kind of look at, let's see here. Let's really quick take away that section cut so we can do that over again. And let's look at, for example, this may be pulled from my model, meaning that like this could be part of a bigger model. So this doesn't have to necessarily be built just as a construction detail. This could be built um, as part of my model and I can just grab the stair and grab the planter and the handrail and all of the things that come with it. And I can just copy those either into a new file or copy it off to the side. You know, you may or may not want to use the entire model and add construction details to it because, you know, you may want to modify it, you know, and you want it to be a little bit different because, again, construction details sort of read um, a little bit different than how you might have it um, before. So let's pretend like we're not, let's pretend here for a second. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. There we go. And I want to jump to the next step. Let's pretend like we are starting from scratch. I grabbed the stair and the handrail and the planter from my model and I copied it into a new model. First thing I might want to do is come over here to tools and section plane. Now you can add a section plane on the outside. The problem is, is if you had multiple details, then what it's going to do, it's going to cut through everything, right? So you, as a safer bet, you may want to actually go into whatever group that you want to show a section cut through and do that same thing. Tools, section plane, use the arrow keys if you want to align it you know, to an axis. And then there you go. And what's cool about that is then what I can do is if I wanted to just cut a section through, in this case, the stair, so I can see what's happening underneath it, I can do that fairly easily um, without interfering with sort of like the other geometry, like the handrails and things like that. So now I've got a keyboard shortcut. You can come over here and go view section planes. I've got a keyboard shortcut for that. Just kind of allows me to toggle that on and off. And then this is where you get to kind of decide here. I purposefully extended these uh, handrails, um, the post for the handrail a little bit lower. So I kind of want to start there. I'm going to, let's see example. I'm not going to do the whole detail. I'm just going to do part of it. But for example, I'm hitting the modifier, which is option alt. And then I'm using the left arrow key to make sure that I'm aligned to the green axis. That way I'm getting a rectangle that is centered here. And if I want to bring that up again, I'm going to just make sure to snap that there. I'll push, use push pull to pull that back. And you could leave that. You could just use a rectangle and cut this out, or you could offset it 
you know, or I could kind of do something a, a little bit fancier. Let's see if this works. Is come over here and use something like the the um, use something like the circle tool, and I'll show you why here. Because what I want to do is I want to remove this piece to show that there's some space around it. But in order to do that, I kind of need to pull up this arc, which is a half circle. And then when I delete that face, maybe even take these and, and reverse these. Come here, reverse those, turn the shadows off just so you can see that. So if I turn my hidden geometry on, you can see that I've got that arc there and it just gives a little bit more depth when you look at it straight on. So if I change my camera to, um, if I wanted to show this almost like as a traditional detail, I could set the camera to parallel projection. And then you can see that depending on your light settings, so your shadow settings, depending on where your shadows are hitting, you're getting that depth that's coming in there. And that's actually kind of cool. I'm also using SketchUp version 2024. So you can see here, if I go to edit and then my faces, you can see the difference that the ambient occlusion makes. Maybe I'll back out a little bit so you can see that. Now again, whether you like the sort of flat style, um, that works too. And then you can add that ambient occlusion and especially it works well when you switch your style to, um, for example, hidden line style. You can see that you still get that all that cool depth and stuff. And I'm really liking the way that looks. So let me go back. Let me leave all that stuff alone. Go back to textures, make sure am inclusions on. OK, cool. So speaking of styles and surfaces and textures, so once I get this done here, I can group that or make it a component depending on how I want to use this again. And then inside of that, I'm going to open up under not my crayons here, which these are Mac OS. A lot of people ask where these come from. These come from the Mac operating system. So if you're on PC, it looks a little bit different. What I want to point out here is under patterns, you get some kind of cool things that look a little bit like construction details. There are lines and there's textures and there's just things, but more on a um, almost like a hand drawn or a CAD drawn look. So what I want to do is look for this one kind of here and I can apply that to the concrete. So I apply that to everything within there and then that gives it kind of a concrete looking uh, texture, which I think, let me switch my camera angle, which I think looks pretty cool. Now, depending on how you model this, you can also come over here and I'm going to copy this. I'm going to delete it. And I was kind of thinking ahead. So I made this handrail. Um, I made this a component. So if I go in and place this in, go up here to edit, paste in place, you can see that if only by uh, pasting it one time and it shows up, wherever this handrail shows up, uh, the footing will, the concrete footer or footing will show up as well. So now there's more to it here, obviously, um, depending on whether you're making this up from what you know, how it's going to be built, or whether you're using a construction detail as a reference, like I showed in the beginning. Let me go, go ahead and just undo that last step because I already have all of these things in here. So if I turn this on, I can come over here and say unhide. And for whatever reason, that one stays likes to stay hidden. So I'll unhide that and I will turn off that. So that's, again, super cool. Like I said in the beginning, um, you can look at it a few different ways. You can look at it in Oxanum in axonometric, you can look at it in elevation. Again, I probably want to take the uh, camera perspective out of that. Or you can look at it, in this case, in plan view. And then you just turn that section off. And then depending on how you've set up your file, like in this case, I have 2D plants and I have 3D plants, um, 2D as in a symbol, and 3D as in a face me. It's not actually 3D, it's, they're both 2D, but you get what I'm saying. That's kind of cool because then I can look at this in plan view and I can look at this again. I can look at styling it and then when I'm ready, I can send this off to layout and add my annotations. I wouldn't do that here. So that's it. You can see here if I move this around, whether you are cutting a section through it, whether you're showing the footer, whether you're adding plants and details and notes and things like that, it's really up to you on how much information you want to show. The cool thing about this, again, like I said in the beginning, is that once you get it into 3D, you can choose after the fact how many different views you think you need to explain how this particular planter needs to be built or can be built. And I just love the idea of having options, as always, and choice and control. So if I just cut that one section and then I find myself contractor asks questions later, you know, this really helps kind of just add that extra level of detail and polish and dimension to your construction details. So 
I'm going to let you go there. I'm going to say thanks as always for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, have you used this method? Have you tried it? Are you worried about it? Does it, mm, is there something, do you just like CAD? It's okay. We can, um, I won't tell anyone. So let us know in the comments and we will see you next time.